Uh, this is lecture number two in your in this series on microprocessors and in the last session we dealt with basic terminologies associated with microprocessors uh, today we'll jump to 8085 we'll see the features of 8085 so a bit a little bit about uh, the evolution uh, So we talk about the evolution of microprocessors in general and about 8085 uh, in particular. Uh, we'll see that it was around in 80, 1940s when uh, the digital computers actually started to evolve uh, made up of vacuum tubes. So they were actually quite bulky, uh, it took up a lot of space, produced a lot of heat, fine as big as a room, uh, you had a computer. Uh, because of the evolution of transistor technology in 1948 uh, by owing to contribution by Bell Laboratories uh, we were able to reduce the size of uh, these digital computers and microprocessors started developing and uh, we could integrate a large number of uh, transistors on a single chip uh, from small scale integration to very large scale integration today uh, very very large scale integration rather we are able to fit in millions of transistors on a single chip and therefore the capability of microprocessors has also evolved considerably uh, so from uh, the point of view of microprocessors we can say we have been in the speed of processing has uh, increased the data processing handling data processing and handling capacity has increased as well as uh, the memory interfacing has been better so in terms of uh, these component these three features the microprocessors have evolved from early 50s uh, to you can say 2021 uh, by uh, by leaps and bounds right so if you see about microprocessors, it was around in 1970s when Intel, uh, uh, the first microprocessor in introduced by Intel was 4004. Fine. Intel based microprocessor 4004, a 4 bit microprocessor, was introduced in 1970s. And since then, you can see. Uh, commercially available you do have uh, Intel i9 processors today core i9 uh, you have yes i9 uh, based Intel processors today uh, so it was around uh, in around this time uh, that Intel started developing microprocessors in the 1970s starting with the earliest one that is 4004 then came 8008 that was an advanced version then was 8080 and finally uh, Intel uh, 8085 was uh, introduced around in 19 uh, around 1980s so it was one of the most important uh, microprocessor that was developed by Intel around that time and it has since been used uh, in a large number of applications uh, we cannot f we are not going to be using i9 processors uh, because of its complex nature because of the cost involved with uh, higher speed higher processing uh, higher you can say processors which have better speed better frequency uh, the cost is also high so we do not use i9 in say for example a washing machine or in traffic lights uh, for such applications where you need uh, where you need uh, which are actually uh, construct constructed by cost uh, we opt still for uh, microprocessors that can handle that much, that much amount of uh, data processing capability and we we still see Intel 8085 being used in a large number of applications 
and uh, say for example in traffic lights and other embedded systems like washing machines etc so uh, apart from intel and uh, we also see uh, zilog motorola amd uh, based microprocessors that have been used in various applications in embedded systems or general purpose applications or even in pcs so uh, we'll be now uh, focusing around intel 8085 so our core structure has been actually designed to cover 8085 in detail so uh, some of the features let's uh, look at the features of intel 8085 first intel 8085 is a 8-bit microprocessor as i said to you last time the word length basically means how many uh, bits of uh, information uh, this microprocessor can handle at the same time so intel 8085 can handle 8 bit of data at the same time so it is a 8 bit microprocessor its clock frequency is 3.14 megahertz fine so you actually if you see about i9 uh, the clock speed is around 4 5 gigahertz and its memory size is 64 kb 64 kbs of memory fine so you see intel 8085 being an 8-bit microprocessor a 3.14 megahertz clock frequency uh, and a memory size of 64 kbs compare it with modern day processors uh, that you use in PCs you have 64-bit 128-bit microprocessors you have uh, uh, if you talk about Apple or uh, higher even other PCs uh, around that range you can have a turbo boost of up to 5 gigahertz of frequency uh, and your memory capabilities again you know, normally speaking also you, you we use one terabytes of uh, hard disk uh, that's easily interfaceable with i7 i9 processors and two tbs so these are some of the general features of intel 8085 uh, now why we basically study intel 8085 So all the basic features of any CPU uh, are embedded or which can be actually understood in the easiest of form uh, uh, is available with 8085. Uh, secondly, it is used it as universal applications. as well as it is universally taught fine thirdly we understand that intel has actually also monopolized the microprocessor market that's another big reason And for smaller applications, uh, such process, such processors, such uh, low rating processors, are actually sufficient. And among uh, these applications, most of them actually require eight-bit microprocessors. So one of the uh, most commonly used one is 8085 uh, so if we talk about intel 8085 it is one of the most uh, commonly available uh, uh, 
microprocessor, 8-bit microprocessor that's available in the market and uh, it has been used in a number of applications and we also understand that Intel has basically monopolized the microprocessor market uh, you, almost 70 to 80 percent of uh, you can say PCs that are available use Intel based microprocessors there are second on the second number if you say AMD based microprocessors but generally speaking there are not many uh, PCs laptops that actually run with AMD based microprocessors uh, so that's why we study 805 and there are applications that have been uh, that are actually relevant to 8085 that are actually used throughout now coming back to the features of uh, 8085 So 8085, it's a product of Intel. It's an 8-bit microprocessor and was introduced in 1977. It was introduced in 1977. It's an 8-bit microprocessor that we have established by now. Uh, uh, one of the important things to note down about 8085 is that it is a 40-pin dual inline IC package so this IC chip basically has 40 pins we'll be studying each and every pin in detail and we'll be understanding uh, the function of each and every pin of this uh, it operates on a 40 volt sorry on a 5 volt uh, DC supply the internal circuitry of studied uh, tri-state transistor logic uh, TTL logic uh, and the internal circuitry of 8085 basically works on TTL logic uh, its operating frequency as I already mentioned is 3.14 megahertz that actually uh, corresponds to a time period of 1 by 3.14 megahertz that is 0.32 of microseconds fine so we are highlighting the features of 805 uh, its addressable memory is already stated it's 64 kilobytes and it has upward software compatibility with Intel 8080 fine so basically this is also one of the reason that we can use we go for 8085 uh, because it also supports all the instructions that go along with Intel 8080 fine so we actually understand that uh, what the upward compatibility is like for example Windows 10 can run all the programs of Windows 8 but Windows 8 may not be able to run all the programs that run in Windows 10 fine 
so it's upward software compatible with 8080 supports all its instructions uh, and this I also said the last time it has a 8-bit data bus because it can process 8 bits of data at the same time but it has a 16-bit address bus so the address of any of the interfaces basically a 16-bit digit rather than an 8-bit digit so the address bus has to be 16-bit uh, so these are some of the features of uh, Intel 8085 uh, it was introduced in 1977 it is an IC uh, which has 40 pins dual inline package uh, it operates on a 5 volt DC supply uh, the internal circuitry is based upon basically it runs on uh, TTL logic the operating frequency is 3.14 megahertz so these are addressable memory 64 kilobytes it's a FERT software compatible with 8080 it has an 8-bit data bus and it has a 16-bit address bus uh, so now we'll take up the pin diagram of 8085 so this is our pin diagram uh, of 8085 so if I look at this uh, pin diagram there will actually be a groove at this uh, on this side um, in case of any uh, IC there is actually a groove on one side that groove basically indicates uh, the numbering sequence of any chip fine uh, this group will actually indicate that the numbering will start from this end of uh, uh, will start and actually end at this end of the group fine so it's a dual inline package that means where basically there are two parallel paths and each on each parallel path you have 20 uh, pins so the total pins here are actually 40 so if you see uh, you will have to remember the function of each and every pin of this 8085 starting with x1 x2 to reset sod sid trap and you also need to understand uh, what basically uh, the abbreviations stand for fine so some of these chips uh, some of these pins uh, will be easy for us to understand right now but some of them uh, will be difficult for us to understand right now uh, we do not will have to wait for some time before actually understanding their purpose uh, so one of the easiest ones to understand right now is ad0 to ad7 to start off with and a8 to a15 so uh, as i said to you uh, the address bus of 8085 is 16 bit the data bus is only 8 bit so these 8 pins are used for two purposes they can either be used as a data bus or they can be used as an address while as a8 to a15 they will only be used for address so that means that makes it a total of 16 address 16 pins for communication of address while as only 8 pins for communication of data so looking at this diagram uh, pin number So pins, 
सो एड्रेस बस या पेंस ट्वेल्व टू नाइनटीन एंड पेंस ट्वेंटी वन टू ट्वेंटी एट uh it's ad0 to ad7 and a8 to a15 they are used for communication of 16 bit address fine so uh this device basically works on tri state logic 16 bits of data is processed at the same time uh so 16 bytes basically means two raised power 16 uh bytes that's actually which comes out to actually be equal to 64 kb that's actually the memory that we have been talking about so addressable memory is actually 64 kilobytes because of the number of pins uh number of data address line data that this system can uh, this microphones can communicate at the same time and this uh, actually in hexadecimal starts from 0000h to f f f f h right so these are the number of address lines uh, that a uh, microprocessor can use to uh, basically uh communicate with any interface uh so this is about pins 12 to 19 and 21 to 28 used for the address bus as well as data bus fine so pins 12 to 19 has actually ad0 to ad7 marked on the pin diagram they are actually used uh, in multiplexed mode these lines can carry both the address as well as the data the data is only 8 bits of data it's not a 16 bit data so only 8 uh, pins are sufficient to carry the 8 bits of data so what does this mean multiplex mode that means they work on a time sharing basis so at a time if the pins or the bus are carrying the address uh, the data will not be carried at that time if a, if the bus is carrying uh, the data at that time the address will not be carried and as far as these pins are concerned they are bidirectional that means since data as i told you uh, in the last session also it needs to be written as well as read so this these pins will be having bidirectional capability bidirectional bus so normally speaking the data bus basically carries lsb of the address that means uh, if we have we have an address is 16 bit data so it has most significant bytes it has least significant bytes so the 2 bit 8 bit data that actually uh, will refer to the least significant 8 bits will be carried by the uh, by directional buses while as this bus that is actually exclusively meant for, for the address buses will be carrying the msb of the address uh, so this is about pins Twelve to nineteen and twenty-one to twenty-eight. X one and X two. Pins one and two. So what does uh, pins X one uh, and X two basically imply? Uh, so as far as these two pins are concerned, X one and X two. 
that's actually the first and the second pin of this uh, device of microprocessor 8085 these basically hold the crystal oscillator fine the this crystal oscillator basically oscillates at the frequency of 6.28 megahertz Uh, so what does this crystal oscillator basically do? This basically produce, uh, produces stable timed oscillations for the 8085. And it basically produces these frequency oscillations at a frequency that is uh, twice the frequent actual frequency of uh, the microprocessor 6.28 megahertz we understand we know that uh, the microprocessor 085 uh, its clock frequency is 3.14 megahertz but the crystal oscillator basically uh, os produces these timed oscillations at double the frequency that's at 6.28 megahertz now why we do that is because to maintain the waveform for uh, this microprocessor uh, if we look at the duty cycle of a microprocessor of any system it's given by of any switch rather it's given by T on divided by T on plus T off um, if, and if it is represented in terms of percentage into 100% so wave shaping circuitry will basically improve the duty cycle of this crystal oscillator and to do that we basically maintain the double frequency of the crystal oscillator itself so that 50 percent of the dis so that in that 50 percent duty cycle uh, the microprocessor will be able to produce uh, stable frequencies at 3.14 megahertz so providing the proper uh, clock cycle is basically necessary for us uh, so that and this can be done using uh, a crystal oscillator so instead of using a crystal oscillator we can also use uh, RC or RL network to produce oscillations and internally the oscillation is produced at double the frequency that's at 6 megahertz and uh, it's then divided to get uh, the output frequency of the processor data is 3 megahertz then we have uh, pin number 40 and pin number 20 VCC and VSS VCC pin number 40 VSS pin number 20 so as far as uh, these two pins go VCC basically is the pin where we actually apply the plus 5 volt DC supply to the microprocessor and VSS is the ground reference so this is about two more pins that's VCC and VSS so one will be used to actually supply the actual 5 volt DC supply and the other one will be acting as the ground reference and then we have another pin that's associated with um, frequency and that's actually the clock clock is pin number 37 clock out pin number 37 
so this signal uh, uh, this pin actually is used for uh, interfacing and clocking other uh, devices that will be uh, actually interfaced with the microprocessor for clocking the external interfaces we need to make sure that all the all those devices that are actually interface with microprocessor uh, are also in sync with 8085 so make sure that they are at the same speed uh, we make sure of that by using a clock signal uh, being produced at the same frequency that's 3.14 megahertz so that will be actually available here and this will be used for the external devices so today what we have done is we have studied pins uh, address buses we have studied the data bus we have studied pins vcc vss uh, the x1 x2 and the clock so uh, rest of the pins uh, that we have left with today we'll study them in the next session